Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to have a go at putting a, a shower screen into a, a shower enclosure that I've just tiled and uh, grouted. Um, and it's a little bit tight in here today, um, so the camera angles may not be the best, but don't often come across a wall-to-wall -wall, um, shower screen. Normally they're a corner or a freestanding thing these days. So I thought I'd just take the opportunity to uh, yeah, show you how it's done, and we'll go from there. All right, let's get on with it. Okay, today we're using a shower screen from a um, we have here called Sunny Showers, but it's um, I know the same ones actually available on Amazon and uh, yeah, available from a whole bunch of different places. So pretty generic shower screen. Um, it's an adjustable um, screen, so the width of this enclosure from side to side is actually 850 mil. So uh, and because it's an old house, we're never quite sure whether everything's absolutely perfectly vertical and square or those sort of things. So in this case, we've chosen a, an adjustable shower screen. Um, it's one that adjusts from 800 mil wide to 900. Um, and it also has the flexibility that if the walls are sort of out of whack in any way, that the, the actual frame itself will hide any of those imperfections. So um, really good little and actually quite cheap shower screen for this particular, uh, this particular job. So first thing we need to do um, is just mark out on the walls. So we're going to mark out on this wall um, the first part of the frame. So we, we have a frame trim. We put one of those on this wall. We'll also put one on the back as well. Um, we need to get it onto the wall as such and then we're going to mark the holes. We're going to make sure it's all vertical of course. Now you can do that in a couple of different ways. We can either do that with a um, with a laser or in this case it's nice and easy so we're just going to use a spirit level. So we've found our centre mark on the floor. Now what we're going to do is get our spirit level and we're going to get this nice and straight. We're going to make sure that the, uh, the bubble of the spirit level is right in the is right in the middle here, yeah. and once that's in place, we're going to mark. Just needs a slight more adjustment. We're going to mark the position of where we want to put some holes in on here. So there's holes in. Which gives you a text. Just using a texter. And the text that will show us exactly where we need to drill our holes. Okay, so now we've got our holes marked on the wall. Same as um, if you see our previous uh, previous video on how to cut holes through tiles, I'm just using a um, tile borer on the end of a drill, and we're going to actually drill through each of those so that we can put a. Um, a piece in to actually hold the, the, the trim in place. So, first one. Okay, nice and easy on that tile. Some tiles take a while, so you've just got to um, yeah, just take your time cutting these holes. As I said, just um, check out our uh, previous video, which is how to cut holes in tiles and go through it in way more detail. All right, now done the first hole, we'll just do the second and third ones as well. Okay, once the holes have been drilled, then we're just gonna use a raw plug into the wall. Um, we'll just hammer that in, just gently, making sure that if you hammer it in, you don't actually hit the tiles. You don't want to break a tile at this, at this particular stage. So, hammer in, just gently. I always like to just leave it a little bit proud when I'm uh, doing it and we'll just uh, nip that off with a chisel. So a chisel against the side and a little tap. Now it's nice and flush. 
and that way, yeah, you're not going to break the tile. And repeat for the others. Okay, so once your holes are drilled, we'll knock the, uh, the, top off the tops off the plugs. Right, once we've done that, just check to make sure that your holes actually do line up properly. Which, in this case, they, they do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a bit of silicon, a silicon bead down the back of here. I like to do that because it gives a much better seal to the shower and stops water coming out of the enclosure. So bear with me, I'll just go and get some silicon. Alright, so we've got our silicon and we're just going to run a bead down the back of this channel before we put it onto the wall. And that way we know we'll get a good seal um, to keep water in. We'll also just pop one on the outside as well once we've finished, but this is a good one to get started with. All right. And once we've got that in place, to try not to get silicon everywhere. Line up the holes that we've just previously cut or drilled. And then we're going to just screw it to uh, screw it in place. Just check something. Of course I've drilled them the wrong way around. But if we're lucky down didn't I? Thankfully we get away with it in this particular case because the holes are actually symmetrical so I can just spin it around because what I'm looking for is these, these little holes on the inside and that's where we're going to screw everything together and to drill it, um, drill put caps on. So just be careful and make sure that yeah your little holes go to the inside of the shower. Doesn't always work that way though. I always like to make sure with my screws I just line them up and just start them. That means just means that we've got, um, yeah, if the holes are slightly out of alignment, you've got a little bit of leeway to play with. Then once that's in place, screwdriver, just screw them up as you would normally. going a little bit at a time and being careful not to over tighten. Remembering you're dealing with tiles behind so you don't want to over tighten because you're likely to crack a tile. Only happened to me once. Okay, trim's in place. If there's any um, grout, oh sorry, any grout, if there's any silicon that's actually popped out the back, just get a rag just a basic sort of rag, and uh, we'll just clean that up, which we had. Final thing for these trims, a little bit of silicon over the screw heads. That'll just stop any water escaping uh, through there later on. Okay, pretty straightforward. First trim done. Now we're going to spin around and we'll do um, exactly the same thing on the other wall. Hopefully this time they will get the trim the right way up and not upside down. Anyway, let's try that.
that's honestly one of the quickest holes to drill. Sometimes you're lucky and you get a grout line, it doesn't always happen. Something to bear in mind, sometimes you end up with a third trim when you're doing these types of showers. Um, just be careful you know which trims go on each side of the wall, because often the third trim's used for a return panel, another piece of glass coming through. Um, it, it, you know, first time I did one of these, it, it probably took me two hours to figure out where that extra piece of uh, trim actually went. Scary thing was, I actually made it fit. <laughs> That's another story. All right, same thing, just making sure my holes are all roughly in the right spot, which they are. Tapping the roll plugs. Ah, that's another little trick as well. Um, just make sure that your plug hole is covered over. It's amazing how many times you drop screws and drop bits and pieces, and you don't want it ended up going down the drain speaking from experience. Same process, just uh, silicon on the back of the, on the back of this rail as well. And this time, I remember to put my holes on the inside of the shower. Just before we tighten everything up, again, just make sure that the shower is vertical, or the rail's vertical. You have a little bit of play in these. Normally the holes are slotted, so you've got the ability just to move it slightly if you need to. One. Just fill the holes, cover the screw holes with a bit of silicon. And that's probably the most complex part of the job done. Because if everything is square, then the shower frame should just slot straight in. Of course, that's famous last words. Nothing ever goes to plan. Now we've got these two um, in trims in. What we're going to do is we're just going to do a trial fit of the glass. Now, all, the, all of these shower screens are actually slightly different. This one's got a um, small panel, and then we have to assemble the trim that the door sort of sits in. Sometimes they all come in one piece, sometimes they don't. You really just need to read the instructions to figure out uh, yeah, which one works for which. So, trial fit for this. We're back again. Right, the reason that was so tight and wouldn't adjust is one of the screws um, in the top I just had way too tight. So um, I've just loosened that screw off and now the whole thing's going to slide in a lot better. So okay, into that side and we'll do the same on here too. That's better. Now we're in. And now I'm happy. Let's see if I bring that around so you can see it. As you can see now, I've got this trim is adjustable into here. So I've got it pushed all the way back into place. Same on that side is all back in place as well. So we're ready to, um, yeah, fit the door and line it all up. All right, so once we've got that in place, Next step, some hinges. So they need to fit. Let's see if I can bring, I really need to do something different with the camera for you here, but anyway, we'll go with what we've got. Okay, so what we're going to do, if I come down here, you'll see in here there's two holes already in place. And what we're going to do here is put going to screw that in place. I'm going to do the same at the bottom and we've got exactly the same up the top there so we're going to screw those in place. So let's get that done. Just make sure you get the right screws for the right job. They're normally marked in a bag or they're in the instructions somewhere. So nice and gentle, we don't want to strip it. 
That's one. Two. Okay, weird camera angle, but it might just work. stressful part of the job is putting that to a glass shower screen in. The thing to remember with this is that always I always put a towel on the floor or something down just to help um, support the glass so you don't you know, chip the edges that sort of thing. They often come with black um, black edges on the glass. Leave them on until you're absolutely you know, finished and ready to go. So I put the bottom hinge already in place and should enable us to put that in. And so I've got a bottom hinge in to hold. And now what I'm going to do, it's a little bit uh, fiddly. Um, so I can't get a closer camera angle, I'm sorry, but um, now we're going to put the rest of the hinge on. I'm going to try and do this without dropping anything. So one of those to the outside. Just make sure you get your rubber spacers. Um, you never put glass or metal up against glass and tighten it down. You always have a rubber spacer in between. And I need three fingers here. And I've dropped it. Start again. These are always awkward. Two people is much easier if you've got a second person to give you a hand. And this is probably a good time for that to happen. Um, this needs to go on the ends. <sighs> dropped it again. Right. As I say, always easy with two people. But sometimes you just don't have people, so you've got to go with what you got. And what we're going to do now is just test the fit on the door, which is actually looking pretty good, to be honest, because by the time we've got our trims on, it should be in place. Everything's looking, the door fit is actually looking really square. So what you're looking for is an even gap. Let me see if I can show you. We're just looking for a nice even gap between the door here all the way down which is not too bad if we need to adjust it slightly you can do that just by moving the frame and as you move the frame things will pull up into place but that's actually looking pretty good all right now that we're sort of happy with all of that it's time to just drill drill the sides in and just make sure it's all locked off so it can't go anywhere Right, once I'm happy that everything's, all the doors are in place, what we, all the really last things we need to do is inside, you'll see now, we can probably just see the screw holes that we had in upside down when we started. They just need to be um, drilled out, just a fine drill, and we'll either pop rivet or we'll screw those in place. All right, we're back. All right, we're just gonna screw these in and then not far off the job being done. Just be careful when you're screwing really close to tiles. Don't let the chuck actually hit the tiles because you can scratch them really easily. Even if they haven't done that before. Okay. Then the very last thing to do is just put the trims on. Now this particular trim is a magnetic one so it holds the door together. So we just slide that into place taking the plastic off. You can replace these when, um, if you need to as well. Or if they come off for cleaning as well. Stick one on the back, that just protects. 
this back edge, so stick one on the back edge, and that will just seal the door off. And we'll go that way around. And then the very last piece is one then for the bottom, which should be here somewhere. I had it here. Definitely had it here. Yes, it was here, it was up against the door. So we just put the last little trim on the bottom of the door. Then door handle on, and once the door handle's on, we're going to just silicon around the outside, the whole outside of the shower. Once that's done, job's done. And the very last thing we're going to do now is just silicon up the all around the shower. So let's get that done. Right, all done. As always, if you like what you see, you know, just uh, like the like the video and subscribe to the channel would be great. And otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you soon. All right, let's just have a quick squeeze of it. And it's not a lot of room, as I say, but it came up okay. This one, a nice opening door. All right, so we've got the frame done. So now we just need to push it into place and get it fitted up nicely. Oh, this one's, this one's really tight. Okay, and top's in. And now we'll do the same. Not quite in. We'll fit the same on the bottom. Oh, bloody hell. Why on earth is this so tight? <clears throat> Can't work with that. Let's just pull. back out and let's see if we can adjust it slightly. Okay, I've got no idea what's happening with this camera just at the moment, so we might just turn it off and turn it back on again.